Alright, right here, uh, we're gonna we're gonna start with the Iroquois Nation. Uh they called the Hunter Messiah, the, the French uh named them the Iroquois. But anyway, it's a uh people of the Longhouse are historically powerful Northeast Native American Confederacy in North America. They were uh known during the colonial years, the French and Iroquois League, later Iroquois Confederacy, the English as the Five Nations, comprised of the Mohawk on the Daga. Which are the Seneca people? That's where you get Seneca village that they're talking about in New York. The first black uh, uh, African American um, village in New York was started 1819 and, and later developed in 1825. They pushed them out in 1850s and, and now they uh, renamed it Central Park. But these were where these people come from, the Old and the Dog. They won the war, they sided with the British, won the war with America. George Washington didn't like that shit after it was over, 1779, under the Sullivan Expedition. Y'all look it up, the Sullivan Expedition. Put all the resources in to destroy these people called the Seneca. 30 years later, they came back to that land. Well, in 80, that was in 79, 83, a land for Indians no more. Took their name, stripped their name and they, uh, their sovereignty. 30 years later, they came back, 1819, started building their village. 1825, they built in there and named the Seneca Village after they tribe. Or the owner of the dog, but it means Seneca Village, people of the hill. All right, but they tell you in history that they don't know who these people are. It was the, it was the older the guy or the Seneca people. Cayuga, on the deal, Cayuga and the Seneca after 1727, they accepted the uh, Tuscola uh, people from the Southeast in their Confederacy. All right, we're gonna come over here. This is where the Constitution come from. The U.S. Constitution come from these people of New York. These people called the Iroquois. That's who that is on that badge right there. That's the Indian with the uh, arrow in his hand. Mm. H.Con Reds, uh, House of Congress, Resolution 331. In the state of the United States, I, uh, so we come down here. The state of the United States, it's a legal court document. Y'all can look it up. Concurrent resolution to acknowledge the contributions of the Iroquois Confederacy and nations to the development of the United States Constitution and to re reform the continuing government to government relationship between Indian tribes and the United States established in the Constitution. All right. And so this is what they, they gave the 13 colonies when they came together. They, they adapted uh, the great law of peace, peace, which the five Iroquois tribes we just read off right there, they came together. Yeah, they said, united we stand, divided we fall. That's where you get the whole little fish situation and shit from. They put that together because they they war for over 100 years and they feel like if they come together, nobody can beat them. And that's what happened. Now, different European nations start coming in. You had, uh, like I say, the Seneca, they sided with the British. Then you have uh, them side with the uh, French. The Dutch, uh, the Mohawks sided with the Ducks, with the Dutch. They all got their individual relationships with these European, different European nations, and, and that they lost their uh, loyalty to each other, right? And it, it became about money and trade after that. All right, we're going to come over. So we just wanted to point out that there was a powerful government there. They ran New York, the Iroquois Nation, and they actually gave the, U, uh, the U.S. the right to do business over here uh, on this land through their constitution. And y'all can look it up. Ace Con Red 331 right there, pull it up, the legal document. All right, now we're going to come over here. This demand coupled the native desire for British manufactured goods led to a booming slave trade that affected every nation in the region. This deadly commerce uh, resulted in widespread warfare, dislocation in which many lost their, uh, in which many lost their ethnic identities, okay? So this, this, native, uh, this deadly commerce resulted in widespread warfare, dislocation, and many lost their ethnic identities, right? That's how a lot of motherfuckers lost their identities. Mm -hmm. All right, through the war, you get beat, you got to get off the block. You know what I'm saying? You lose who you go off. You got to move. You know what I'm saying? And so this is what happened through Indian wars, right? And one of the most dangerous people here was the Iroquois. These niggas did not play no games while you New York niggas crazy. It was against a movie's background that the several native groups adopted indigenous captivity practices to demand of the Euro-American market. Especially successful where the Chickasaw who used the slave trade argument to the economic and political power. All right, let's come down here. Before European and African arrived on American soil, the land's native uh, people had taken one another as captives. All right, now we're going to come down here. Uh, although a lo large scale slave trading arose because of European demand, mm -hmm. the heroes of change came to southern villages in the form of uh, gun-toting Iroquois warriors, okay? 
So the Iroquois way is the people in New York were the first to get the guns from their European homies. All right, now what happened in, in Indian um, in Indian captivity? If you lose a the war, then you become my prisoner. And for all the men that I lost, I bring in you will replace the men. The warriors from the other side, the other tribe, will replace the ones that they lost. That was Indian law. But when the European got in it, the British specifically, when the British came, the British said, "Damn, well, y'all just a slave and niggas, homie. You, we trade. I give you something to give you. The, uh, you know what I'm saying? They they swapped them out like that. Instead of keeping them, bringing when they tried, they started selling them to the British. The British would send them overseas to the West Indies to, to work the plantations out there. That's how that started happening. All right, now the gun told warriors in 1610, Dutch traders out of New York and Iroquois warriors began a mutual lucrative trade in exchange for beaver pills. The Dutch provided the Iroquois with clothing, tools, and most importantly, firearms. Mm. In order to monopolize this trade, the Iroquois used force and intimidation to cut off their neighbors' trading routes. All right, so they had guns. Now other people ain't had guns, and so now they cutting off the trade routes. Now it's, it's getting greedy. It's getting like cocaine in the eighties. All right, it's getting like cocaine in the eighties when they, they the, the gang started getting money. They started getting bigger guns, and they needed bigger turf. All right, now we gonna uh, we come over here. Slavery among Native Americans. Include slavery by Native Americans, well as slavery and Native Americans roughly uh, within present day United States tribal territories. The slave trade ranged over present day borders. Native, some Native American tribes held war captive slaves prior, prior to and during European colonization. Some Native Americans were captured and sold others into slavery to the European. That's what we were just talking about. While others captured by the European and sold into slavery. A small number of tribes in the late 18th, 19th century adopted the practice of holding slaves as chattel property. They came in 1824 because uh, the U.S. feared that uh, the, the uh, tribes down south, because they had just got down there, they feared that they would get into the uh, Underground Railroad. Right. And they didn't know the lands down south. So in 1824, they offered them status. They offered them a certain status. That's that white status down south that they, they, they offered them. And uh, it's changed for them not to join up with the uh, the uh, Underground Railroad. So that was the difference between that. All right, now we're going to come over here. Uh, many Native American tribes practiced some form of slavery for European introduction of African slavery in North America. Native American groups often enslaved war captives. All right, so I just want to point that out. Now, they didn't know the land, right? So we go back to a story in 1775. The slave owner called Isaac Ward, right? Now, we just told how they got the slave. The Indians would fight each other. My rival groups, but we'll go in. It wasn't necessarily the white boy, because at this time, the white boy didn't have no footing, and these niggas would get on your ass. The Indians would get on your ass back then. It was too many. Isaac Ward of East Chester, New York, believed that his runaway slave, Robin, a man of mixed Indian and African ancestry, had, had set a course to the North River, Hudson River, to get over uh, among the Indians. So the nigga slave ran away, he tried to get to the Indians over there in the Hudson River. Ward right. offered the reward of four pounds for his return and, and capture in East Chester. So if the nigga was in East Chester, you know what that's at? East Chester. That's right up here by me. That's right here. Damn, that's crazy. <laughs> uh, that's five pounds if he taken to another country and seven if he taken among the Indians, right? He gonna pay him higher if he taken among the Indians because they don't know these lanes. That's why the Underground Railroad was conducted by Indians because these were Indian trailers. They didn't know how to get through them, so it was easy for a person from the land to run through there. This is the reason, one of the reasons, because the slaves here, the uh, Native American slaves, they'll run away or they'll fight your ass. You know what I'm saying? They'll right. you, be sleeping there, they'll come in there and chop your head off. That's where uh, Nat Turner and all of that come from. That's Shout out to uh, Donald Grant. Donald Grant, that's his, his kinfolk, not a way Indian. They're going in bitch and chop your head off or something. And so they couldn't even sell them them slaves right there. So they start bringing in African slaves to work the land because they ain't understand the land like them. All right, so if they run in the Indian land, he'll give them seven. So he'll give them seven pounds. The highest fee for the return of Robin from Indian country reflected the high cost required for travel and for uh, purchase of trade goods and ransom to secure his release. So they, they had to pay the Indians the highest if they go get him, right? right. So they had to get somebody to look just like him because they didn't know how to run, go get through them land. This is where the slave catcher come from. 
came from in, other Indians going to go get him because the nigga had to pay them higher. The higher fee also represented an increased incentive for slave catchers. Had to go. The Indians was the motherfucking slave catcher. The niggas look just like you to return runaways. Oh, that was sure. down here. For evidence of New York colonial officials beseeching the Iroquois to return runaway slaves and the Indians claiming ignorance of such runaways. And so, nigga come through there, yeah, which way did he go? We don't know. I don't know him. I ain't seen him. So they start offering high money for these niggas to go get him. And they was going to get the Iroquois, but they were scared, right? And now I want to show you who the Iroquois were. Black Indians and Native Americans. Defined as Native American due to being affiliated with Native American communities or being culturally Native American uh, who also have uh, significant African American heritage. Many indigenous people of Eastern Woodlands and the Narragansett. That Narragansett, Peacock, Wampanoag, Shinnecock, all right? And we're going to come over here. Oh, shit. But they, they, they had African descent. They had African blood. African American. Right, exactly. Uh, well, these, these particular um, indigenous groups, and this, these were the ones just straight from America. See, the, uh, the, this, the, until the 1600s, that's when the slaves from Africa, they start bringing them in. Mainly through the Tuscarora War, 1711 through 1715, uh, mainly through that era, right? Because they couldn't uh, uh, control the niggas that were there. At that time, the Europeans didn't have too much land here yet, and it right. was too powerful for them. So after the wars of the Peacock War, the Yamasi Wars, then they started being able to uh, to gain a little footing or whatever. And that was in the uh, mid 1700s when they started bringing the Africans over. Uh, Clemson Tigers, uh, where they play at the Catawbas, and you start going through the Tuscarawas, the Tuscarawas, and all of that. That was in that era where they started bringing them. So we're going to come over here to Black Indians. Who are the Black Indians? United States uh, regions with significant populations of Black Indians. United States, especially the Southern states. So we see the Southern, all of them. You niggas coming from down south? You niggas, they said especially you niggas <laughs> with motherfucking Black Indians, all right? Now where is Oklahoma? New York, where you at? Uh, 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 uh. Bronx, I'm in the Bronx, my man of money is in Brooklyn. With New York, you see mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Regions with significant populations of black Indians, New York. We talking about the Iroquois tribe right now. Mm -hmm. uh, one of my favorite boxers ever, right? Henry Armstrong, one of the best they ever did it and got away with it, all right? Henry, Henry Jackson Jr. was an American professional boxing and world boxing champion who fought under the name Henry Armstrong, all right? Let's go down here. Early life. He was born Henry Jackson Jr., December 12, 1912, in Columbus, Mississippi. He was the son of Henry Jackson Sr., a sharecropper of African American, Irish, and Native American descent. Uh, Aunt America Jackson, said to be a full blooded who? Yeah, full blooded who? Who we talking about right now? Yeah, full blooded Iroquois. Look at that. Look at that. So if you know uh, who, 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 uh, uh, Henry Armstrong is. If you know who Henry Armstrong is, goddamn. Yeah, yeah. Henry Armstrong was a full blooded Henry Cortis. Alright? That's not a problem, ladies and gentlemen. So, yeah, on the NYPD, the slave catcher, and then they, they had a desperate relationship with the Henry Cortis, one of the most powerful nations, one of the most powerful governments over here. And that's, that was their way in. That was the European way in. And they ended up taking that land from the Iroquois. Under 1783, they made it official. You know what I'm saying? 1779, they took the stronghold. 1783, they made it official. But if you want to know what Iroquois is and what they look like, that's where he get that warrior spirit from right there. Henry Armstrong, one of the greatest they ever do it. You know what I'm saying, man. Appreciate the Drew Tight for letting me come on and kick my shit one time, man. Uh, any, any time, time, family. Any time, family. You know, you tend to stand up, man. Um, on a side note, man, you know, that's why that the um, that's why the insignia over there is black. I'm looking at it. I'm, the more and more, the more hidden messages, man. They're black. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's why they painted it black. That's exactly. why they painted that fucker black. Look at that shit. It's black. Because now they're trying to tell us that it wasn't really white motherfuckers doing this shit. It was us doing it to each other. Facts. 
And we you look around, we still doing, we still practice the same shit we practiced back then, doing it to each other. The same fucking thing. This is unfucking believable. You know what? It's believable. 